Welcome to uh, week one. Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Absolutely. So today's a good day. Why? Because we're beginning to get back into the groove of things. And I'm really excited to see the level of enthusiasm a lot of you have, have started employing and being able to even submit assignments. So here's the thing, guys, especially those who are who enthusiastically started submitting the you may we may not have given enough guidance on it at the beginning but we guidance okay we are committed to giving you as much one-on-one -on -one feedback as is possible during this weeks and the weeks forward why we are personally committed to making you succeed okay so this is what's going to happen we gave two non assignments and released them some time yesterday so most of you who submitted the assignment kind of did not make, get the point tutorials. The first tutorial is going to be today after the session around 1 p.m. UTC. We will set, uh, we will remind you in the announcement tab and uh, we'll remind you in the announcement tab and then you can join in. So the, techni the non-technical assignments are specifically focused on helping you succeed in the call aspect of this. Things that will ensure you succeed once you're able to join the world of work and things that will help you grow into an all-rounded professional. Okay, so that is great. So let's talk, uh, but before we go on there, you guys had a... Uh, you had a technical tutorial yesterday. I am very encouraged to see the week one channel on Rocket Chat get buzz and it's a flame and it's wonderful. So that is great. So I want to hear from uh, a number of you, a few of you today. One, uh, what are you working on today? What are you working on today? And uh, what are some of the barriers that you're experiencing so far with your return to uh, Ten Academy? If you can, um, if you can raise your hand, then we'll just talk. I want feedback to hear from a number of you. What are you working on yesterday? What are you working on today? And what are some of the challenge areas you're experiencing? Who wants to take us first? This group is of confident human beings. Michael Daco. Go for <clears throat> All right. Good morning once again. Um so uh what where I am now is I'm trying to get the flow in my code. Um I actually have you know, have an idea where the um, the fi what the final project should be like but actually to be able to find it um, get it automated where you can just import um models and, and abstract some of the things in there so i'm just trying to think about the logic behind it and all that to ensure that there's that flow uh, i think um and then um trying to get myself abreast with some of the technical stuffs as well to get to know some of the statistics and then the operations behind some of the stuffs that you would use to get them um, your results yeah Cindy, I think you have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> quick question. Is there any specific blockers that you have when you're coming to figure out the code stuff that you need help with, or you're good? Michael? Yeah. Um. No, I don't think uh, where I have now, where I'm, I think where the tutorial for yesterday is quite okay, and then I'll try and set them um, go through some of the resources too and find um, means where I could just add a few things to what was given there. So I think I'm okay. Okay, that is very encouraging to hear. Kate, you raised your hand. Could you tell us where you are at now, what you're working on and uh, what exactly are any challenges, if any, you have? 
What did you work on yesterday? Hi. What are you working on today? And are there any blockers that you have today? Hi, good Hello. morning, Kate. Yeah, morning. Um, I'm working on task one right now. My goal is to finish task one by the end of the day. But from yesterday's session, it was very informative. So it's been pretty easy to kind of tackle the specific challenges that we have been given. So, so far, I don't have any problems because the ones that I had have been answered in the, in the rocket chat. So yeah, so far, so good, yeah. Okay, that is wonderful. Thank you for that, Kate. This is very encouraging to hear. Uh, there's someone else who raised their hand. Who else raised their hand? Let us see. Uh, Zilala? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so yesterday, I was trying to get a grasp about how the flow of the, pro the project should be, how it should be organized and things like that. Uh, but the thing that I'm having a challenge is that uh, about the structure of the code, especially on task 1.2, mm -hmm. it mentions in the graphical univariate analysis, it mentions that we should have a plot, uh, some kind of plot on each variable end. Mm -hmm. As we have seen, almost the number of the variables is I think about 56 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure whether we should select some of the columns mm -hmm. or not. And the second thing is, it mentions that we should uh, impute our outliers at first. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't we show that on the on a box plot mm -hmm. when doing any univariate analysis on each co column or variable? Mm -hmm. So I think the structuring uh, uh, in the flow of the code is somewhat that I'm having a challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank and you for well, sharing. Overall, it's good. Okay, so I'll, okay. I'll just ad address that part. Um, <clears throat> Zalalem, so the main element in the challenge is if you are stuck to guide you. But if you have good ideas, you have to implement them. So that means all these things that you said, including, for example, that you, you should plot a box plot to see the outliers and you know whether they're kind of Gaussian distributed or not. These are the things that I also mentioned that you have to understand. It's it's all about this week, it's all about this understanding uh, what is reasonable to do. Right? The guideline is a, a suggestion. So if you can go beyond, that's great. Don't okay. don't be limited by, by what is written. So I, I would say just do what is statistically sensible and, uh, and also what would make it good, like extract more insight. It's all about extracting enough insight and that doesn't come just only because you do what we said uh, you do. So, but that's the minimum requirement, what is specified. If you do that, at least you we know that you will get certain uh, insights. But if you can go beyond, just go on. Don't get limited. I just want to add one point. You're muted, Arun. I, sorry, I wanted to add one point to that. Um, we had a call with an employer yesterday and they said one of the challenges that they see when they interview is sometimes people get lost in the technical details and they forget to answer the question that's being asked. So let's keep centered on the overall business need here. As Yabu Bell said, you can implement whatever is uh, interesting, possible in terms of technology, but we frame the question in a, you're trying to answer a question for the business, and this is a skill that we're also trying to develop. The, uh, the code and the technology and the analysis serves a purpose, so keep that purpose uh, front and center. Great, thank you for that. Uh, anyone? else who feels like they're in a position to tell us uh, what they worked on yesterday, what they are working on today, and any other UL, you raised your hand. Please, go on. Uh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Good I have some requests. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going well. Uh, the instructions are very clear, and I'm trying to follow the instructions. 
Uh, yesterday, uh, from my side, I was having uh, connection issues that uh, I couldn't attend the tutorial sessions. And I found the uh, posted videos on YouTube. Uh, that's why where my request begins. Uh, if, it, if it is possible, uh, it, it is to increase the resolution of the videos on YouTube, especially on the tutorial sessions, because a lot of text is in there. That's my question. If I understand you correctly, what you're asking is if we can increase the resolution yes, of the videos yes. on YouTube? Yes, especially on the tutorial sessions. Mm. I, I, did you okay. check, did you check okay. that it's not because of when you stream you can change the resolution? Is it just because there was no high resolution? Yes, the maximum was uh, 360. Okay. Okay, so I, I'm not sure if that is because of our setting in Google. So we'll we'll check it. Thanks for letting okay, us. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Fumbani has asked a question to Yababel and Abubakar. Um, given a data set, between having simple statistics, such as to get an idea of the data and fixing missing issues, which one of the two comes first? I think it's there's there's no which one comes first. Um, the thing is, it isn't. I think like a kind of a question that you can decouple um, easily, in a sense like to understand how the data is distributed. You sometimes need to know how much is missing and where it's sampled from, and therefore you cannot just get an an idea without dealing with those issues. And also, you cannot do those issues without understanding, uh, you know, having a, an idea. So it is about trying both sides, like trying to understand from multiple angles. It's like trying, focusing on the problem. That means like where it is uh, coming from the data. So the most important element that you can have is that what, how is the data collected? And that you don't have to ask us, you know exactly where the data is coming. If it's a call, it comes because people called, and then you have to understand how is that distributed, how is statistically those things kind of modeled. So they are they are not continuous, right? Because people call at a particular time, and normally probably they are kind of slightly random, right? Because unless people talk, kind of know each other, talk to each other, like oh let me call, let me call, unless there is a program, they usually just call random. So they are probably random, and these models are kind of. Poisson distributed. If the numbers are large, then they are Gaussian. So these are, of course, it is all e easier, obvious for me. I know that you, you, know, you don't have to be versed in that way of thinking, but it is about understanding those elements and getting used to them and learning like, okay, what is the data? You have to start always as like, where is, you know, how is the data collected? And then that, that the kind of the universe the data is coming from. And then you say like, what sampling techniques was used? So that means, is it a full sample? That means, like, do we have everything in our data set that everybody that called is registered? Or is it something like that a few of them is only just kept on a specific period, which doesn't probably generalize for the whole period? So that's kind of time sampling. So it is that kind of question and trying to understand. But when you visualize them, that's what you realize. OK, why is it looking like not Gaussian at all? Is that because the way that I choose to plot it is, is kind of I chose some number. Even if you don't choose it, sometimes the, the code has a default. If you just do histogram, it may bin it into 30 bins. But maybe by increasing or decreasing, the, the plot might change. So is it due to that? Can I do something else? Can I, can I get some idea? Can I fit it with a certain a distribution? Can I do some other plots, for example, by just looking at instead of number kind of averaging in a certain period, equal period. Stuff like that would help you to understand more. Hopefully that is um, clear from Bani. So yeah, let's continue and then I will answer if there are any questions in the text. Uh, okay, thank you for that, Yeba Bell. Um, and uh, Jerusalem has 
also given a solution to UL when it comes to the whole um, uh, when it comes to the whole visibility of the text issue. And this is exactly what we mean when we say that peer mentorship is an important part of this experience. Being able to support each other in simple things like this is what we love to see. So Vincent asks a question. Uh, what insights are inspection? What insights are inspection for normality? I was thinking we could and then treat it as it could be. And then uh, he continues. I basically think that different real world scenarios follows different statistical distributions, even though most concepts are normally distributed. So anyone from the tech team want to no, I, I think I think this way of thinking is is okay, but I would be a lot more encouraging. You guys are not just students, you are trainees. That means you should be thinking more slightly different in a sense that you have to think about where the data is coming from and what generates it. So that is the framework I, like we want you to guide you through. So that means it's like, what is the data about? This is a, a call. And a call is not like in a larger number, it may tend to Gaussian because of a certain theorems called uh, the central limit theorem. But a call is distributed uh, Poisson. So because discrete values are kind of distributed in a certain way. And I think these questions are great. I'm encouraging these questions for you not to feel like to hide. It's about exactly like to ask to, to kind of develop that maturity, right? So it's good, but it is kind of like when you look at it, you should look at it from like not only just like, okay, I plot it and I see, but it's also like thinking about, especially given that you know now where the data is coming from, it's telecommunication data, and you know some of them are continuous, like data usage and stuff like that, but some of them are packaged, so that means they are not continuous. So this discrete versus continuous uh, things, but time series versus uh, kind of, uh, and then sampling, time limited window sampling versus like a random sampling, all this is key things to that influence uh, data like how you are gonna analyze the data. So it is good, just ask as much as you want. And then when you plot, just think about these things. Okay, what about the missing values? Are they gonna influence probably these things? If, and are they significant? Like if they are above a certain threshold, for example, if you have a 50% data, it is much likely that it would completely give you a different angle if you didn't have a missing value. If there are more outliers, basically then you cannot treat them as outliers, maybe they are features. So it is this thinking of like between, and then asking when you are not kind of versed in this kind of way of thinking, asking, using the community to get more uh, understanding. Hopefully that, that uh, helps, but just keep the questions coming. Keep, I, I saw yesterday some encouraging discussions. It's like, you know, asking about normality and some other people as, you know, answering about skewness and these things, but at the same time, if you if you know what we are saying in the guideline, if you understand it, fine. Then go beyond it. So the guideline is just there for people to get on the same page, like at least a minimum level. Uh, but if you can go beyond, you know, just explore. And when you when you want to plot, as the LLM, for example, earlier said, you probably can se select the subset of data that is kind of reasonable, like you know, visual like plotting like 50 of them and not understanding one of them is really a crime, right? It's better to actually plot as, as few or kind of by breaking apart into sets of categories maybe like, oh, are these durations, times, are this that, are this that, and you may be able to understand, infer uh, much more. So hopefully that, that gives you clear. So let's, like, if there are questions, just raise it. Uh, we mostly will discuss, so we'll use this part more for this kind of guidance, like the stand up, more not for as question and answer. But if there are more questions, what we can do is that we will set up just after this, we will have a call. Um, after this, the stand up, then we can talk about all that, all those kind of questions. So, but let's let's keep this one um, more as a kind of like, what are the problems? What are the challenges? How can you know? How can we as a team? Uh, 
uh, navigating. Okay, thank you, Abel. And uh, Blaise, I think you will you will be able to raise uh, those questions that you have, especially on uh, on Rocket Chat. I can feel like I feel like a number of you could use some additional time to go through some of those challenges you're having within the technical within the technical uh, assignments and uh, figuring things out. So uh, apart from the super specific questions you have with your assignments is there something else that you feel um is there something else that you feel like you need support with if we handle um the tutorials or or something that you feel like uh, you need support with when it comes to ensuring that your assignments are done in time anyone have any feedback at all Maybe let me jump in and also ask if there are any questions around the non-technical assignments. Has anyone started? Yes. So I have one general comment and we'll give specific feedback to those of you who have already submitted. So some of you have submitted and said that your specific job, uh, the specific job that you want to take up is data scientist. So that's not specific enough. We're looking for an actual, real advertised job. Um, that, that to me is like saying, "What do you want to be in? What do you want to be when you grow up?" And the answer is happy. So we're looking for something a little bit more specific. Or if you say, you know, what sort of partner do you want to find? And your answer is rich or nice. So we're looking for something very specific. Vincent, you raised your hand. Or Michael, yeah, I, I see Michael, not Nail, and Alifa. So, hello. Yeah, Vincent, go ahead. Hi, Vincent. Vincent, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Um, uh, on the the task that was given, the non-technical, I, I tried, but hello, can you get me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I tried the yes. non-technical uh, task. But just as you said, I, I was able to just um, to see from that general perspective, like I think one of the things I mentioned was uh, analytics engineer. How would you rate that? It is, is it still general or it's a, a little specific? Because recently I, I was uh, interested in a position with the same description. And uh, I don't know if we would uh, create, uh, treat it as specific or general in this context. So specific means that you can post, post a link to a job which is actually being recruited for. So look anywhere in the world. So go to, if in Kenya, you can look on Fuzu, you can look on LinkedIn jobs, you can look on Indeed, you can look on Monster, find one real one company that's advertising for analytics engineer. If it's not being advertised, it's not specific. Yeah, so, so this specific one is it was. But it, so you you've gone on mute somehow. You're muted. Yes, I, I'm saying this specific uh, uh, position called analytics engineer was advertised, and it was something more or less like working between a data engineer and and uh, and a software engineer. So I I think that is one of the specific uh, positions that I was seeing that would be of interest to me. But is it being, are they looking for somebody today, 13th of July? Yes. Okay, so if you can post a link to it, perfect. Great, okay. it has to be advertised okay. online. Online. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's what we're looking that's for. What we're looking for. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Not now. Okay. Hello, guys. Morning. Okay. It's clear. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will start with the technical problems or difficulties I were having. So um, yesterday, uh, I started working on the tasks that was given, but I'm having a bit of difficulty understanding and wrapping my head around the concepts like this statistical concept like 
normalizing data scaling and everything i may do the programming but the wrapping my head around this uh, statistical concepts is a little bit uh, hard for me uh, you can code it but without understanding it I think it's no point so I would uh, be happy if there was a good tutor on making us familiar with those statistical concepts uh, and I'm trying to follow the tutorial and everything on the non-technical uh, I just uh, I haven't googled the online jobs I just put what I thought was uh, right and I will start googling and finding a real job thank you great thank thanks now now okay so just for the sake of uh, um, completeness after this like at 10:45. I will, I will just be staying on this call, and whoever wants to ask some statistical questions, uh, you can ask. And I'll be able to answer some of the questions. That's 8.45 GM, uh, UTC. Yeah. And, and if you guys, will if you want to. Tutorial. It's not a tutorial, it's just more uh, random q and on statistical thinking. And uh, I'm offering a $5 reward for anyone who can stump you up a bell with a question. <laughs> that's, that's and we also joke. have a tutorial. On this, is, this, this call is super serious. It's supposed to be a joke. $5 to anyone who can stump you up a bell. Hopefully, hopefully there's no black market dealing going on. Elizabeth, you have a question. Elizabeth, are you there? Sorry, yeah. I Sorry, think I we lost her. There you go. Mm -hmm. oh, good morning, everyone. Um, I had a question Elizabeth. or suggestion. Uh, during the tutorial sessions, I don't know if it's possible um, to have like the materials that we'll be going through during the session put up on GitHub so that mm -hmm. we can have direct access to the notebooks. So instead of like relying on the presenter's screen, we can be able to mm -hmm. see it on our on like a different brow different tab so that if we're talking about something that is in a particular cell, um, a specific function, we can all have access. I think it would be easier for us. So that in case anyone misses the tutorial session, they can still have access um, mm -hmm. to the notebook um, later. On GitHub or something. Thank you. I, I think if I answer for that question, I think most of the time, if I think uh, the tutors can also add in there. We put the tutorials in the uh, Google folder, so that the tutorial materials are already in the Google folder by the time there is a tutorial. So it's not in Git, but it's in the tutorial folder. So if it is. A uh, notebook, then it is in the t in the Google folder of the week that you can access, and definitely it was that yesterday. Um, so the one that Abu Bakr gave that it, the notebook was in the Google folder. So all the materials that are used for tutorial plus the the description is in the Google folder. And uh, you should find the link uh, to the Google folder on Rocket Chat and uh, in the week one channel. But we'll reshare it just in case. Okay. Um, is there someone else who has any pressing matter that we need to talk about before we call it a meeting? Anyone else with any specific challenges? Christian, go on. Uh, morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Please, can you hear me? 
Yes. Okay. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, about the task that you gave, I I get some issues that I would like to to get more information about that. Um, it's about uh, the, the real the real job of the machine learning engineer and the machine learning scientist. I didn't know the difference between them, but I, I saw that online they they was not doing the same things, and the the I can say yes. So can you help me to handle the Christian, what was your question? Could you repeat? I said that yesterday about the task that you, you gave us, I saw that there are the machine learning scientist jobs and the machine learning engineer. And I, for me, they are doing the same things. But online, I saw that it's not, it's not what I expected. So, can you help me just? But this is great, right? Isn't isn't it great to now actually see what the what's happening in the real world? <clears throat> Let we're we're here to prepare you, everyone here, to get a job. You can't get a job that doesn't exist. Um, so you have to find out which jobs actually exist. So it's a very good question. I think we should start this discussion on Rocket Chat. What is the difference between a machine learning engineer and a machine learning scientist? Um, what different roles and responsibilities do each of them have? Okay. It's, 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 it's not a one word answer, right? I would say that there's a difference in, maybe I can give you a one sentence general answer. It's much harder to design a system than to operate a running system. And generally speaking, when people ask for five years of experience, 10 years of experience, they want you to design a system or to deal with a poorly structured system. And entry-level jobs are, generally speaking, to operate an existing system. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Blais, please, I can see you have a series of questions that are during your your mini tutorial after this session. So please hang on to those questions, yeah? Because we will be able to address that. Perhaps we can take uh, two more people, so to speak. There's someone who's raised their hand and I want to figure out who that is. Um, today, go for. Tadesse, can you hear us? Tadesse? Hello, hello. Okay. Hello, hello everyone. <coughs> can you hear me? Okay. Ah. Oh. Oh. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. Uh, on the, oh, yesterday class, uh, a little bit I'm confused on the description of the problem. Maybe uh, if, if there is a chance to describe that problem in a brief way uh, actually from our tutor we have understand how the data is cleaned processed transformed and so on but a little bit here uh, the description of the problem is uh, i think it is difficult maybe if there is an stage or any chat box which aided us in order to understand that problem description because uh, cleaning, the transforming, and so on issues are clear, but uh, here on the problem, it is a little bit different. Yeah, so maybe if it is not part of the task, understanding is not part of the task. I require your aid. Yeah, I need your aid to clarify these things for me, uh, from either from our teachers or from member. And I, I, want, I want to just jump in briefly. So Teresa, it's a, it's a good point. It's really important that you, you ask questions. So the question that you've asked, it's, you're basically saying, I don't know what to do, which is fine. But you must ask a question which is more specific than I don't know what to do. If we put you into a job 
and you're given a task, it's very likely you won't understand. The person giving you the task will not spend a whole bunch of time giving you a specific task. They'll give you a general task, and they'll wait to be asked questions. But they have to be specific questions. So spend a little bit of time and energy and come up with a list of three questions. Ask them on Rocket Chat. So if you say you completely don't, and I, I can't believe that you don't understand the task at all. You must understand enough to be able to ask three good questions. So ask three good questions, and then you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's that mindset and that mentality which will um, be useful for you when you enter the world of work. I think actually it's the task description is it may have some gaps, but it's much more detailed than you're likely to experience when you start working. So ask, ask. There's, it's really ask as many questions as you can. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. That looks like a dad joke waiting to happen. <laughs> Thank you, Jim Desson. You had to tell us the answer. Um, I think we have one more person. Christian, are you raising your hand again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I would like to ask something about the time we did because we've had yesterday. It's about normalization. I would like to ask you that uh, before I normalize my data, should I take for account the how can I turn now? The, the size of the population. Hello. Uh, hi, uh, Arun. I think you're speaking, but you're muted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. He was asking about normalization. Yeah. So, uh, repeat the questions again. Sorry, uh, Christian. Yes, I said that yesterday. You you learned how how to. To, how to deal with normalization. And I said, before I will apply normalization, maybe on one variable, or, um, did I take for account the, the size of the population? Because uh, when you talk about normalization, it's about the distribution of, the, of, the, of maybe the, the, the variables. So, uh, before we apply normalization, did that take for account the size of the population? So, these are wonderful questions. Let's assume that we entered, just we finished the stand up, and then we go into the discussion, the statistical discussion, probably, so that whoever wants to leave can leave. Um, so, maybe we can stop the recording and start the recording new, just so that it doesn't overlap. Um, yeah, so just I'm going to do this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Okay, so I will answer your question, but also anybody who wants to ask or hear some of the questions and answers can stay. <laughs>